uh, to this exciting day and joining us live. So, Riyadh? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Odan, for the introduction. You're welcome. Um, I want to thank you guys for having us today and giving us that opportunity to talk a bit about WeWork specifically in the Middle East. Uh, as Ozan said, uh, mentioned before, I am the GM for UAE Middle East and North Africa. I'm very excited to be here. We just launched our operation in 2020, despite COVID and all the tough periods we had, um, we believe the demand is very much there and uh, and we sort of, COVID sort of accelerated our business. But let me take a step back by saying, so basically what is WeWork? Uh, it's a flexible workspace platform. It's not a co-working because by co-working, it means that it's a bunch of companies sitting under one roof and sharing the same space. Our model is quite different from co-working. Um, it's, uh, so open space is 10 to 15% of our capacity, whereas the remaining 85 are private offices. And this is something we found very important to companies who wants to have, who want to have their privacy while benefiting from a community. Uh, so, a lot or the majority of our members are sitting in private offices but also sharing an open and communal area. Uh, so basically, um, we, again, we provide members with space, uh, services, but most important community. And uh, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to afford to build communities uh, our existing community is comprised of 700,000 members uh, across the globe. And uh, those members are split uh, between 150 cities, 40 countries. And very recently, we just launched UAE, who is going to be uh, the beginning of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, we've got around 850 locations. And our community portfolio what's interesting is that a decade ago we were started with startups and then evolved and now 50 percent of our community is comprised of large enterprise and the other 50 percent is a mix of entrepreneurs freelancers startups small and medium businesses and i think that has been one of the main key success factors to we work and we want to make sure we want to keep that balance because uh, we notice that we don't want to have 100% of enterprise, but also we don't want to have 100% of startups. We want to make sure we keep that balance, and this is what has been working very well for you. Now, going back to the term of flexibility, it's been in WeWork's DNA for the last decade. So we started in 2010 in New York, then we started expanding internationally. And we've been at the forefront of the flexible spaces. Uh, by flexible, it, I, I can summarize it in two words. Flexible in space and flexible in time. By time, I mean we offer anything between uh, a short-term commitment, a month, up to five years, a long-term membership agreement. Uh, we're seeing more and more people or companies uh, don't want to commit to long terms because we're living in a, in a, I would say, variable world. We've got a lot of uncertainties. Nobody can plan how many headcounts he's going to have or whether he's going to downsize. Uh, companies are moving away from the three years and five years plan. So they're looking more into flexibility and they want to commit based on their business needs. Uh, some of them prefer to go on a monthly basis, some of them uh, 12 months or above, okay? On the flexibility side also, uh, by flexible in space, I mean companies want to be able to grow, to expand, or contract downsize as per their needs. And we've been seeing that. Uh, during the course of time where some companies started small, then expanded and hired more people. But also during COVID, we had some cases where companies had to downsize. And 
if I'm a company that has 10 headcounts and I had to downsize to five, I, should, I shouldn't be paying for a 10 desk office. And this is where Weir comes in and helps you to downsize, to downgrade. Because even though we are losing revenue, uh, I think I believe, really believe that this is how we create loyalty and trust with the members, uh, helping them go through these tough times and we'll be 200% sure that when these companies are ready to expand again, they will expand within Weir. Now, Again, flexibility means a lot of things. The most important is being flexible in time and space, but also we offer global access. So as a WeWork member, let's say you've signed up in one of our WeWork locations in Dubai, it's as if you have 850 offices around the globe because with the same card, uh, the card that we provide to you once you've signed your membership agreement, uh, so basically that's the secret. The same card has all your info, all your credits, it gives you access to all of our buildings. And due to COVID, we offered the global access for free up to December. However, COVID uh, made us rethink our model and we had to innovate and adapt our offering to these tough times. So uh, recently we've launched uh, two new offers. Um, one of them, so the we were call access already exists. However, we're offering it to non-members. So any member that needs a space to work from, uh, but doesn't need a physical desk or a private office, uh, can now purchase the we were call access. And, and this has been quite successful so far. Uh, but also the second interesting uh, product we just launched recently, and it's a test pilot in in New York around 20 buildings, is we work on demand. And the idea behind is very much similar to, I, I like to compare it to Amazon. Nobody wants to pay for a subscription. He wants to pay for whatever he needs. So you go on Amazon and you purchase whatever item or product you need. You don't subscribe for a year. You don't pay subscription for it. So we work on demand basically is for any non-member who wants to benefit from our portfolio or footprint of buildings. He wants to work in a safe and healthy space. And we can talk a few words uh, around that. Uh, who cannot access his official office. Uh, who's looking for a safe place to work from. Um, so he would purchase on an hourly basis or a daily basis, we work on demand, uh, access office space, can book conference rooms, benefit from all of our f and amenities, and then leave. So we've been working a lot on innovation being our offering, uh, and I think those two products go a long way with what happened this year, with uh, all the COVID problems, economical crisis, etc. Now, uh, maybe a few words before I move to what we did as post-COVID measures. What we've been seeing lately is all type of, of, of companies, all sizes, not only enterprise, they're looking into the hybrid model. What does hybrid model mean? It means I've got a team of employees. I offer them the option to work, let's say, two days from home and three days from the office. So basically, if I'm rotating those teams between A, B, and C, I don't need uh, a large space anymore. So companies are looking to exit their traditional offices and considering moving into flexible workspace where they need less, smaller space since they're rotating. But also we've seen a lot of hub and spoke, and this is something we can offer uh, because basically, let's say a, a company has a CSU in London, but they're avoiding commute and they're avoiding using public transportation, we were able to offer them a split of their team into different buildings and location next to their houses, but also remaining connected through our platforms and our technology. Uh, one last thing, I don't want to take more time. Um, we did a lot of work during uh, March and April, and we had to spend a lot of money on post-COVID measures. We wanted to make 200% sure that our members feel safe 
uh, coming back to the office. So we've done a lot of uh, a lot of work around the future of work, and, and uh, we rolled out our future of work plan, which includes a lot of changes. And I can I can mention a few of them, such as increased sanitization. Uh, where we had, we installed a lot of hands-free soap dispensers. We are providing masks and, and gloves to our community. We had to maximize the fresh air in coming into the HVAC, review the HVAC filters, prioritizing personal space, social distancing, all that is respected, behavioral signage. And I think it's been a good, uh, we've seen good results, I would say. 80 to 90 percent of our members are back into their office spaces and space looks amazing uh it's buzzing the vibe and energy has come back or almost come back to normal and i couldn't be happier than working from my office uh sharing uh information with my colleagues and having discussion over coffee so again um uh, Thank you guys for that opportunity. Um, anyone who needs more clarification, just jump onto WeWork.com or I can, I can leave my, my credentials, contact details, and we can reach out on a later stage. Again, thank you, Ozan. Thank you for your team. You're welcome. That's You're speaking. welcome. So before you leave, I might actually have a few questions. Um, we have a few minutes before. So when, it, when everything just hits, uh, I was in Saudi in March, uh, and then I went back. I was barely not quarantined, and then I, I traveled to Azerbaijan, almost made it back to Turkey. And then I started remembering, like, what are we going to do when we get stuck at home? And back in the day when I was living in San Francisco, I had a WeWork right across me a couple of blocks. We were all surrounded. I, at one point, I was planning to move my office to WeWork, but we, we had a larger team, so we weren't able to do that. I was like, I believe that was the future of work. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I'm not even going to go about like, uh, probably you don't want to talk about what happened to WeWork during the IPO process, and maybe it will kick back in. And then now we're completely talking about some different type of future of work. And where do you see uh, the industry of, like co like managing spaces, either it's a co-working space or a flexible office, where do you see that going? Like, will we ever go back into a place where we're just going to hang out, buddy, buddy up and like have our coffee, beer, whatever? Or when do you see that happening? So a lot of people are betting on the thing, right, uh, to go back to normal. I personally believe it's still going to take some time. Um, it will persist for longer. Uh, that's why we had to do a lot of work on how we make our members feel comfortable coming back. Uh, will we go back 100% to normal? I doubt very much. We'll always have that hybrid model. But from the other side, does work from home, is work from home sustainable? I truly don't believe that. No. It's very tiring. We already have problems splitting our professional and social life. And I've worked from home and I couldn't. It was a very tough time for me. It is. Uh, I wasn't that, even though I was working more, I wasn't that productive as in the office. Uh, so we're seeing, as I mentioned before, all types of companies, all sizes, looking at this hybrid model, or at least having that option of, if I want to go to the office, I have yeah. that option available. Now, from our end, we had to make all these works uh, to make our members feel safe and comfortable coming mm -hmm. back. And talking about Dubai and Abu Dhabi, we're seeing that people coming in physically, yeah. they'd rather work from their office than, than home. Uh, and again, yeah, I think we're at 80 to 90% of members in our spaces. Some of them are still a bit uh, scared or concerned. Uh, but we're trying to do anything from disinfection to fogging just to make people feel comfortable and the densification. So I, I actually um, have a startup that recently graduated from one of our programs. He's designed a small box, uh, like, like a shoe box. It can make it bigger. So every office will have those. I will come in, 
you'll put your bag, you'll put your phone and everything, and it will disinfect in five minutes and let you know on an app. So in one way, COVID has accelerated how we work, how we engage with each other. And on the other hand, I also think people who are very skeptical about like, oh, we work is gonna die, all co-working spaces are gonna die. I think large corporations always meant more in the real estate market and they were tenants of, as you said, 100 people office, but now they're going like, I can't bring 100 people back to my office, what am I gonna do? I think, strangely, when people thought co since co-working and flexible offices are dead, I think it's there will be an, a time where large corporations will come knocking on your door, and maybe if you can share if that's happening already, coming so to you and say, let's give our members this card that you just showed, and then yeah. they do whatever they want, because absolutely, work from home is not sustainable. I have my daughter next door, Every 45 minutes, I had to go back and see if she's playing yeah. Roblox or is on the class, which is yeah. truly tiring, actually. So that's exactly what's happening, Ozan. And we were not sitting at 50% of enterprise. That happened during the 2020. So between Jan and today, we went from 40% as an enterprise portfolio up to 50 and we've, we've even seen that in Dubai right after COVID when the lockdown was lifted. Companies are coming to us, large enterprise, saying, well, we, we don't want our large space anymore because we're gonna split our teams into ABC. We're gonna do some rotation and we don't wanna invest on fit out construction. We wanna turn key office and Looking at the market, WeWork is one of the major players who can offer a large scale offices because that's a big difference between us and other players who offer anything between 10 and 20 desk offices, whereas we can offer up to hundreds. Now, did we get uh, enterprise? We sure did. Uh, they're really considering uh, WeWork. Some of them are considering us as plan B in case they got tested positive in their HQ, yeah. they've got a plan B to WeWork. But also what you just said, some companies such as, uh, I can name Do, the internet provider, who came to us and said, well, we don't require physical desks. We want access cards to our sales team Absolutely. who are moving in the markets. And this is something also we can offer. I think WeWork is going to kill Starbucks at, at one point because people are used to go to Starbucks on their between commutes. Okay, I have two hours of gap between my time and the meetings. I'll go to a Starbucks, I'll put my headphones, I'll work. I was like, now, like, I, I don't want to go with plastic masks and everything and I can't eat sanitizer or watching, like, I can't even do anything. So I think in that sense, the walking opportunity to flexible offices you go in from one door, nobody touches, you go in, you go out, and the sanitation team comes in, cleans it out, and cleans. And if I can actually see that, I would like to go back to some place. I want to see people around me, but not touch people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. for another while. That's exactly what we do. Uh, look, we're social beings, right? We need to communicate. Oh, 100%. And if you want to have tough discussions, tough decisions, we need to be sitting face to face or in a group. Yeah brainstorming um but yeah uh first well it's a safe place uh and we have a good coffee we have a good barista coffee yeah. so i mean well. I, I need four things in life communication <laughs> connectivity computer and coffee so if i can get all those four and i used to love going to we work uh yeah when i was living in the states and also uh, probably if I ever get back to Dubai, I'll, I'll see. Please do. We'll, we'll have welcome. coffee with our masks and everything once this is yeah, over. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. Fred. Thanks so much. And uh, again, uh, we're just scratching the surface. We started with UAE. We're going to expand within the UAE, but also we're looking at Saudi Arabia, Egypt, yeah, yeah. and then expanding in other markets. So crossing fingers. We'll, we'll keep in